What's up, Buttercup? We're back in the studio, <laughs> aka on the Zoom. Studio. Yeah, aka Adam's bedroom in my basement, the studio of the future where everyone is in a virtual setting and no one goes out in public and everyone just looks at a screen. That's, Dude, that's, that's, my, that's not the future. That's the, that's that's the present. Well, the, yeah, that's true. That's true. We were first to the future. Yeah. No, not really. Today we're joined by Natasha Rogers and Fiona O'Keefe of Poomer Elite. Poomer Elite? That's just... Uh, that's, I, okay. I feel like I was missing a word there. Uh, we, we, we say Poomer if, if you've been listening to us for a while because... Our uh, friends over at the Aussies set. Yeah. Oh, friends down under, uh, Jen and Ryan Gregson. They taught us about the proper way to pronounce a lot of different all words that we Pumer. didn't know. Yeah. yeah. All about Pumer <laughs> Elite. So, well, yeah, not Pumer God, Elite. Do you all about off, Pumer. Do you how <laughs> off the rails that intro and outro got. Very, very off the rails as we tried to, yeah, put forth like our best Australian accents and it was not. It was not going very well. We've got to be due for just like an, I guess maybe that was uh longer in coffee. Like just, we've got to be due for something that's completely off the rails that yeah. goes on for way longer, <laughs> way longer than it should. That's right. That's right. Well, today we're diving in with uh new, new teammates, you know, they're Natasha moving out from Colorado, moving out to North Carolina, joining uh, the Puma elite team roommates with Fiona now and yeah we caught up with them about their training stint that they had in Kenya their fast 10ks that they just ran uh pretty recently at the 10 um went what was it 3048 3049 oh god yes 3048 no 3048 and for uh Natasha and 3055 for uh Fiona so just off of that a standard that they need so they're gonna have to give it another go but so great to see them out there crushing fast times early in the season. And uh, yeah, just just diving in, catching up with them, hearing life updates, hearing, hearing how Puma Elite, the team's doing, hearing how life is going in North Carolina. And I don't know, doing what we do, getting to know them a little bit, I guess. Before we jump into that, uh, Chris, what do we got to plug? I feel like we have about a million things. <laughs> Got a lot of things to plug. Got to plug the hole in my sailboat because it is leaking. <laughs> Got to plug... <laughs> <laughs> gotta plug my nose hole because i got blood coming out of my nose no i i don't know just plug plugging all sorts of holes over here <laughs> okay <laughs> I, dude i think i i think i manifested us, us going off the rails oh that, my god uh, oh my Ryan god okay coming. let's let's be focused uh we we've got a yeah we've got a couple of exciting things happening outside of the beer mile podcast world One of which, which you should all be aware of, is the Beer Mile World Classic, the official Beer Mile World Championship, coming to Chicago for the first time since, well, first time in the U.S. since 2015, coming to Chicago on July 1st, and we want you there. We want you to come either race in our open Beer Mile heats or come spectate and watch world records go down. You know, Corey Belmore is going to be out there sending a you know, 420s uh, beer mile, which is going to be pretty epic. And then we've got tons of women that are all like right at the world record time that are going to be shattering yeah. that too. It's going to be, I, it's going to be the big. women are going to go sub six this year. I, I think a big breakthrough is going to happen. It's just a matter of who does it, but I, yeah, I can see it coming. So beermile.com slash worlds. And there's a link in the description too, but that's where you go to learn more about the party and everything that's going to be there. And you can also register, get your tickets and well, which by the way, you should get, you need to get tickets now because we are at, we do have a capacity and it is selling out, you know, pretty quick at this point. I think by the time you're hearing, yeah, by by the time you're hearing this, I mean, (laughs) definitely the beer mile open. If you want to do like compete in the beer mile yourself, it's you gotta it's getting pretty it. full. Like you got to, you yeah. got to get in there now. Um, so yeah, beermile.com slash worlds. And if you're a listener of the pod, you know, you can use code beer mile pod, all one word, all caps and get, a, get five bucks off. You know, we'll sauce you a little bit, a little bit of a benefit for being a listener. And, um, also even if you're not racing, I should say there are, on that site, you can see on the registration site, whatever, you can check out the merch that we have, which is pretty sick. And you can still order merch even if you're not coming to the event. And what the coolest item, I think, is the USA drinking tank. Well, the, the USA beer mile team tank, but it's like the that's the party sweet. tank of the summer, baby. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 
I'm just going to wear that to work. Like I'm just going to show up to a zoom call and I'm going to have that bad boy on. I'm going to be like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I fuck what's up. <laughs> <laughs> It's like right up your alley being in, being in sales now. You're like, just like, oh, I'm a yeah. beer bro now. Like, yeah, I'm a, I'm a bro. You're a bro. No. <laughs> so beermile.com slash worlds to register for that. Uh, another um, I, I quickly plug the, the sponsors of worlds rapid fire. Let's do it. Let's do it. We've got the official beer of worlds, two brothers brewing based right, right by me, West Arbors of Chicago. Adam, what's the next one? What's the next sponsor? Got Athletic Brewing, obviously your NA sponsor. Keep the party going without people getting too wasted. That's right. That's right. You've got Long Run Coffee, which is electrolyte infused coffee, which is perfect for before your runs because we know coffee dehydrates you. But if you're getting those electrolytes in along with the coffee, you're going to be fueled up and ready to go. And I think we have one more sponsor we should plug. What's the last one, Adam? Does Good your memory serve you well? Gym. There we oh, go. Yeah. There we go. Good old Balance Gym. For those of you, if you're in Chicago, sorry, Balance Gym isn't for you. But well, actually, that's not true. I think I think they might have uh, coaching services, if I remember right. Maybe maybe they, virtual. Yes, have, maybe virtual. They, they do have coaching services. They're based out of DC, but uh, yeah, sponsor uh, specifically for our Athena and Clydesdale division. That's so, right. Super for, stoked that. We get to put that on this uh, this summer. First ever Clydesdale and Athena official championship in the beer mile. It's going to be pretty sick. Uh, So thank you, sponsors. And one of those sponsors, Long Run Coffee, we actually are doing a collaboration with. So we mentioned the electrolyte infused coffee. Well, you know what else that's good for? The day after drinking. You do a beer mile, you wake up the next day, maybe a little hungover, a little dehydrated, but you know, you're an athlete, you still gotta get out there and perform. Well, guess what? Electrolyte infused coffee is the way to go. No longer do you have to choose between chugging a Gatorade in the morning or getting your caffeine in. You can get both with our collab, Long Run Coffee. We've got your boy, Tinny. Is he a boy, is he a girl? Yeah, we don't really know Tinny's gender. Um, <laughs> But you got Tinny front front and center on the bag there. We'll put a link in the description. Um, can we can we give a, a, a little coupon code? Do we? Yeah, have let's do it. Do coupon code because you're all special. Beer Mile Pod, all one word. Uh, probably all capitals too. We're gonna message Long Run Coffee right after this and make sure they set it up. <laughs> <laughs> Beer Mile Pod. Use that at checkout. It's probably at least 10% off, maybe more. We'll see what that we'll see be, what it's, it's a do. mystery. It's a surprise. It's a mystery. It's a mystery uh, <laughs> surprise box. Put the code in and see what comes out. <laughs> yeah, like Adam said, no more double fisting. You know, no more, you know, Gatorade in one hand or Pedialyte in one hand and coffee in the other hand. It's like, just just drink the coffee, you know, just enjoy both, it. Yeah. Enjoy the coffee. It's good for you. Yeah, the coffee is uh, called hangover away and we'll have a link to that in the description here you can either get it on their website on longruncoffee.com if you go to the collaborations part of the menu you can see it there or when you register for beer mile worlds there's an option just to add it onto your registration and we'll deliver it right to you uh either the day of the event or we'll ship it to your house if you're doing that option for uh having your packet shipped to you so try that stuff out it's good i've been drinking speaking, it every morning speaking of packages um, mm, mm. you got to shave yours. You do. And, uh, sometimes you need the performance package to, you know, really be at your full best self, your full confidence. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's, it's, you know, we're in full, I would say, uh, spring is in full swing and, uh, there's nothing better than now that, you know, it's not going to be below freezing anymore, you know, shave, shave your legs, man. You know, it does that well. Lawnmower 4.0 from Manscaped. Damn right it does. That You said it. The weather is turning warmer, and that means you're wearing shorts. That means you're going shirtless. You're taking that shirt off. You better be making sure that you're uh, you know, you cleaned be up skates, a little bro. bit. That's right. You got you to gotta escape you, the you situation. Skates, <laughs> <laughs> they should make a shirt that says you escaped, bro. <laughs> That's it. Free marketing advice. Free marketing. We're always giving free marketing advice on this one. Manscaped.com. All of your grooming and hygiene and confidence needs, uh, both men and women, makes a great gift. You got a man in your life that, you know, they have a birthday coming up or just you just want to show your appreciation for them or they're just disgusting and you want to help them get cleaned up for your own sake. Manscaped.com. Use code BeerMile, all one word, BeerMile for 20% off and free shipping. You know, can't go wrong with that offer. 
All right. Well, the only plug left I got is uh, is my drug dealer. So with that, let's get into the episode. <laughs> Okay, welcome to the show. We'll start there. Welcome to the show, uh, Natasha, returning uh, to the Beer Mile Podcast, and Fiona joining as well. Uh, maybe just for the audio listeners, if you could, I don't know, give us give us your little little uh, introduction, say your name, so people can actually like put you put your voice uh, to your name. Yeah, so I'm Natasha. Um, I I just joined Puma Elite, and this is my new teammate, Fiona. We've been <laughs> working really hard together this year. Um, she's on the up and up. You want to mm-hmm. put your voice yeah, to your sure. name? Um, <laughs> the, um, yeah, I've been on Puma Elite for the past two years. Um, my whole time is a professional runner, and I'm really excited to have Natasha here now. So, yeah. yes, <laughs> this lady does not feel pain. I don't think. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> no, no. She never complains. I'm always the one complaining. And yeah, she's, she's getting me really fit. So it's been a good situation. <laughs> how long have you guys been back from Kenya? Uh, how long has it been now? Like um, six weeks? Two five? months? Yeah, two months. Yeah. That seems like years ago. And it, really it almost seems like it didn't even happen. It was so <laughs> surreal. <laughs> how long were you there? Like how long was your training camp? Um, it's about a month long. Yeah. Pretty much the whole month of January. Yeah. Yeah. It was awesome. Um, completely different way of life, different way of training, like the mentality, everything is simplified and all the clutter and all the distractions and all of that is out of the picture. So it was like really, really good for us. And, um, just like for me personally, it really helped me like really become present with my training which was a great way to start the year it was a really random trip but yeah yeah it was kind of like last minute like we thought we were just gonna do altitude camp in Colorado so I'd actually oh, like, so it's like an impromptu trip to Kenya. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah literally four days before it was like so do you want to go to Kenya <laughs> but it was like the same time window as you're supposed to go to Colorado yeah yeah gotcha so, gotcha yeah. Yeah, but Colorado was not a good place to train this winter. And yeah, like going somewhere warm for the winter time is definitely ideal. <laughs> yeah. You think yeah. that's what spurred it? It was just like training conditions in Colorado for the time you were gonna be there was like, ooh, maybe we should find an option B. Yeah, for sure. It was just terrible conditions, ice, freezing yeah. cold, and then like I was there. Um and then like Puma has like old connections um, with Kenya and like we had our uh, our guide there. His name is Godfrey yeah. and he goes way back <laughs> with our agent like years ago. So um, like all the Europeans go to Kenya for like training, getting out of the cold. And um, it was, it's an awesome place to go. I highly recommend it. Yeah. Yeah. It was really cool to just like experience the like community there too. Like all the local runners and everything. And um, we had a couple different guys like that we hired on different days as pacers, which was oh, nice. like fun. Yeah. It was like great just talking to them and hearing like their stories and everything. Cause that's like what they do for work. Um, yeah. Yeah. So being, being a last minute trip, did you, what were, what was the living situation was through the, through the connections there? Did you have like a host that housed you that entire time or did you have your own accommodations? So there was this like really nice resort that we actually got to stay on, on the edge of a cliff. It's like this 8,000 foot high cliff where E10 is. And um, it drops like the view drops off into Cario Valley where what you would think of Africa is like that's down down there, but like up at high altitude, um, it was very different from like what I expected. And so we got to stay at this nice resort. Um, we did not have 
very good Wi-Fi, and we did not have hot showers. <laughs> oh wow! Okay, <laughs> maybe both okay. of those things were for yeah, the better, yeah. though. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, it, it it was a good challenge, like to step out of like your comfort zone and yeah, realize that there's more to life. <laughs> Had either you been uh, training there before? Or is this your first stint? Yeah, yeah. No, never. I went to Uganda once for worlds cross country, but yeah, that's about it with Africa. So, so you met, you Definitely. mentioned hiring pacers. Um, was there, cause, cause I think a lot of the like vision in my head at least, or, you know, what you, I don't know what I, what I see on YouTube or social media or whatever is like everyone in the community kind of comes together and there's just like huge group workouts, group runs, that sort of thing. So is that kind of the, set up that you had as well, where you had like a broader group that you just jumped into, or were, were you still doing like very specific training, like just for you with, with your hired pacers? Um, yeah, we were mostly doing like more specific stuff. Um, but we'd like definitely meet up with like other people, um, in town who just would be like, Oh, Hey, I saw that you're here. Do you want to go for an evening run type of thing? Yeah. Um, yeah, which was fun, like just to get to know some especially like Europeans and stuff. Yeah. Their, their training. It was really cool. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely doing our own little thing. Yeah. <laughs> but we, yeah, like she said, had pacers, which makes all the difference in the world when like, especially coming from my situation where I was doing all my training alone, um, like having someone to like pace and do the work for me, is like really cool. And then, like the camaraderie of like my new teammates as well. So can you walk us through like a day, a typical day there? Cause you mentioned, you know, you're like very, you know, present in the moment. There aren't all these distractions, you know, like my, my day in my life is I'm distracted by my phone or the TV, you know, like six hours a day. So if you don't have that, like what is the typical kind of day of in, in a life there of uh, yeah, training and resting and, and all the little pieces that, that make it up. <laughs> Yeah, um, sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I guess like, so the place you're staying at, also they cooked for us, which was really nice. Oh, nice. So we didn't have to cook the whole time we were there, which was huge. It was good. So uh, yeah, it was really nice food. Um, so yeah, we'd wake up, go down to breakfast. Um, usually drive somewhere for training. Um, get back. Um, yeah, not a lot yeah. to it. Um, <laughs> we actually read a lot. Yeah. Yeah. So like we didn't have, we couldn't access Wi-Fi from our room. And so our phones were out of the picture for the majority mm -hmm. of the time, which mm -hmm. was really refreshing to me. Um, I, especially at this time in my life, like I need to get away from the phone and all of the overstimulation. And, um, so for me, it looked like, you know, reading a book, I went on <laughs> to get to the nearest espresso machine, <laughs> you would have to walk a mile. Um, so I would walk a mile. I would, <laughs> um, write, I worked on writing. I worked on, um, like a lot of other stuff that I wouldn't work on at while at home. And then just, I personally like went out and met a lot of the local Kenyans um, and made like friends there and learning about what it's like to grow up in Kenya, like completely opened up my eyes to the amount of privilege and opportunity that we have at home. And so, yeah, I, I came back like extremely grateful and um, knowledgeable about like what it's like in other places. Yeah. Yeah. It was amazing. Like I think, our guide said that he'd been like a really successful runner back in the day. And he like took a bunch of his prize money and like bought land for his mother. So it was like stories like that, that, yeah, I mean, you realize like how lucky we are to just be able to run like as our job and basically for fun, but it's not like the stakes are much lower in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Adam, you, you put in a quote here. Do you want to read that? Oh note? yeah. Yeah. Uh, from Fiona Substack. Uh, I feel so privileged to have chosen running for the joy of it rather than the economic opportunity though the two seem to coexist here often. Um, I just, I don't know. I guess I found that interesting. We talked to a lot of our guests just around like why they got into professional running. Um, and it seems to kind of 
put people into two pools, like whether it's like, well, it was just like an obvious choice for me to make. Like I, I want to go and like, you know, I can make money. It's a feasible uh, job for me to do that. But I don't know, curious, like your perspective on that, especially training in Kenya. Yeah, I guess so. So I guess like I was saying, like for a lot of people there and I don't want to like overgeneralize, <laughs> um, but it seems like it's kind of like a way to like raise up your whole life and like give back to your family too and everything, um, which is like totally different from like the approach of a lot of American distance runners, at least. Um, like I didn't get into the sport because I wanted to like leave California and, you know, like have a higher quality of life. I like, I get to do this. Um, so yeah, it's definitely like very like fortunate, the angle that we're coming at it from. And then when you got back, I mean, I guess a little bit after uh, getting home, but both of you had great 10 K races at the 10. So definitely want to hear about that, that well, like going into that race, were you both expecting, uh, to, to run as fast as you did? And I guess, what were your expectations going into it? Well, actually immediately like coming from Kenya, um, we went to Boston and the, the travel is awful. Like that is the one thing that I will not <laughs> talk highly about is the <laughs> amount of travel. Um, so we get back to Boston and then like four days later, we race an indoor 5k and we all PR'd there, um, even though we, our bodies felt horrible. <laughs> but like we definitely got super fit there. Um, so that like coming back, PRing in the 5K and then like I had like a lull where I had to go back home to Denver and like things weren't going perfectly anymore. I wasn't having dinner cooked for me anymore <laughs> like right um, right yeah so like i actually wasn't sure what to expect going into the 10k i had like a little injury flare up and other things but we somehow managed to like ride off of our fitness from kenya into the 10k and then just barely missed um the a standard for worlds so we we have to try again in the <laughs> 10k which is not fun, but <laughs> definitely the travel and, you know, all of that can wear on you, the change back, change back in lifestyle to what's going on in the U S. But then also I was curious, like on the, the food you mentioned, like they're cooking for you. Was that like a, a shock or like an adjustment as well of like, if the food is significantly different, I guess what, like what, what's a, what are some of the meals that you're eating over there? Like, what are some of the foods they're cooking for you? Um, I mean, no complaints, honestly, about the place we were staying at. It was like, way better food than I eat at home a lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and a lot of it was like European style too. So it would okay. be like slightly different. I don't know. The only thing was like, you couldn't find like processed snacks at the grocery store. So I missed right. like a good granola bar, but that was yeah. my, I think more yeah. than anything, <laughs> like no, no super food or anything like that, but more than mm. anything, <laughs> it was just having everything from food to getting driven to, to like having nothing to do, but running was taken care of for us. And then like coming back home, it's like, boom, like distractions Mm -hmm. and friends. And like, I had to move from Colorado to North Carolina recently. And so doing all of that while training at a world-class level can be very, very hard. But yeah, now that we're here, like we're kind of back to that rhythm, like getting that rhythm back right in time before stuff starts to get really important. Um, We're going to Boston next on the 15th for BAA 5k. Yeah. 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 Excellent. That'll be, that'll be pretty sweet. You guys are fairly close in 5k PRs, just like a couple seconds off of each other. Um, in the 5k. Yeah. I think I'm like nine seconds off. Is that right? Um, we yeah. were, we used to have like yeah. the same PR. Yeah. But then, um, uh, Natasha killed it. Yeah. I have to say I was, I was a little, um, 
uh, I was sad, mostly like jealous because uh, it, that was around the same time as the uh, Chicago meet that uh, Natasha did last year. And right before I knew that you were training with Puma, I was like, oh, like Natasha's going to come back again and run like a super fast indoor 5K. And you did, but it just like wasn't in Chicago. So I was a bit sad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was thinking about that Chicago race and like it was basically a time trial by myself, but yeah. still um, to think that I at the same time a year ran fifteen twenty and then brought it down to like a fourteen fifty two. So yeah, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah, definitely a good sign. Yeah, yeah. Maybe uh, one thing we wanted to ask about was kind of like what led both of you to Puma originally. Like what was. Uh, I guess, yeah, it, you know, Natasha coming from like a long standing sponsorship with Brooks, but then, you know, Fiona, like, yeah, your, your days, like after, uh, leaving Stanford and then like, w what's the process of going from that to then, you know, ultimately getting in and being, you know, with Puma and, you know, killing it quite frankly, uh, as you tra transition to the, to the pro scene. So what was that yeah decision-making process like? Yeah. Um, I guess for me, it was actually like, a pretty quick decision um because i'd been at stanford like for all my undergrad and then i started grad school at new mexico and was really loving like the running and training but i was like hmm, i don't really want to do school anymore um <laughs> so can't blame you there <laughs> yeah <laughs> it was all zoom school too so not very fun <laughs> um, yikes yeah um and then basically heard about the opportunity for the group out here um, through uh, Joe Franklin, who's the coach there, and then my agent, uh, Tom Ratcliffe, um, and started talking with Alistair. Um, and at that point, like Taylor Werner had already made the decision to come out. And, you know, they were talking about this new group that they wanted to build out here and, you know, the big goals that we all have and I was just really excited to be a part of like something new and have like Puma's investment in us um so yeah was there any like hesitation kind of because you were like right at the very beginning was there any hesitation just because it was something that was new as opposed to like one of the other clubs that has been more established yeah I guess um I saw it as more of an opportunity um and like some groups like Bowerman just weren't really an option for me at that point. Um, so I was just excited to just go give professional running a try and see what could happen. Yeah. yeah. I feel like on the contrary, like when I first signed out of college, it was like, Oh, I get to be a professional runner. Like I just like took what was there. Like I was like, yes, yeah, yeah. I'm going, <laughs> even if it means completely uprooting into like the unknown abyss. But, um, like for me joining this team, I, I, I thought really long and hard about it. it. It was a very spread out decision for me. Um, cause I'm, getting older <laughs> <I'm> an old <laughs> lady <over here. laughs> um, and I'm not as willing to just uproot my life anymore um but like on that same note like I'm at the point in my career where it's like okay am I doing this or am I not and like I just felt like I wasn't growing or changing or um you know I competed at worlds last year but it just was like is this it? Like I'm 15th place in the world. Like I, it just, it didn't sit right with me. And I knew that I was lacking a lot of resources that like a lot of other runners have. Um, and so I just, and that was a lot on my, my fault too, because I wasn't willing to fully commit. And, um, I just got to the point in my career where it was like, okay, Fiona had a lot to do with it, honestly, because like <laughs> she's she won the 10 mile championship, blew everybody out of the water. Yep. And r she ran an insane half marathon and I'm moving up. So I was like, OK, I can't do this stuff alone anymore. And if I'm seeing success happen and there's, you know, like resources to get to where I want to go, then 
um, yeah, I'll take the risk and do it. And I have no regrets. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. How's the, how has the move been so far, the transition across the country? It's been surprisingly smooth. Um, I have had my days, like <laughs> I, uh, I had to like rehome my cat, uh, which was tough, mm -hmm. but like being a professional runner, like you, you can't take care of things. It's like <laughs> kind of sad, but, um, like I've just, there's been some hard changes with it, but like, it's been surprisingly smooth and I love North Carolina. Um, it's a really refreshing change from moving out of downtown Denver, um, doing all the work alone, but I will say I'm getting my butt worked off. <laughs> uh, it's been really, really hard work, um, harder than what I used to be doing, but it's obviously paying off. Um, so I'm really excited for this track season. It's a great year for the two of us to step up and see like, you know, like our whole team is really coming together where it's like, oh, we, we should be talked about as a team now. And it's cool. Absolutely. So do you see yourselves, I guess, how, how do you see yourselves as uh like your key focus or key events? Like, do you still think of it as like 10 K on the track plus roads, or do you actually like see yourself as, you know, half marathon, like road runners now, like where, where, where does the main prioritization lie? Yeah. Um, I guess like right now I feel like we're all in on track season. Um, hopefully a very long track season. Yep, <laughs> um, yep. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I don't know. I kind of like to think of it like just depending on what the next focus is like, okay, right now I'm a track runner. And then like when the time comes, like I'll be all in on the roads. Yeah. Definitely. When I signed with Puma, it was like, Oh, Natasha in the marathon. <laughs> um, and then like, I've been focusing like solely on track. So I think the philosophy here is like taking things day by day and going for where the opportunity is. And um, I for sure will shift to the marathon, um, but that's getting pushed back. A little. <laughs> I don't, I, I really don't know what I'm doing to be honest, but <laughs> right now we're running in circles a lot on the track. So <laughs> well, that's good. Do, that's do good. you think if, uh, like your response to the training and obviously like post, uh, Kenya trip success wasn't there, you would consider that shift sooner or is it just like, Hey, I have more to go, uh, on the shorter stuff for the time being. Yeah. Like I have speed just coming out of nowhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've been on the receiving end of that a lot. And it's true. <laughs> yeah. Like, I don't know what happened in the last year and a half, but like suddenly your girl can sprint apparently. Like <laughs> I, I just have gotten a lot speedier and, um, I might even have a 1500 coming up. I don't know. But. Oh man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> New territory, at least, uh, yeah. of, of, of Natasha Rogers of late. Yeah. Yeah. I haven't, when, when's the last time you've done a 1500? Okay. I've only, I only did two in college. And oh, they were like in random places in like Puerto Rico or something <laughs> <laughs> on spring break. <laughs> okay. So I am so unfamiliar with that event and I'm absolutely terrified. Like when I have nightmares, it's of me running the 1500. So <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. I mean, I, I talk a big game, but um, I, I kind of just want to utilize like the speed while I have it before I get too old and have to start clocking those miles in and running the marathon. <laughs> yeah. For sure. I mean, you've got plenty of time to do that. If anything, if, if recent, uh, you know, so athletes competing today, if they've shown us anything, it's that you can compete in the marathon until you're 40 years old. Like if you really want to, you've got time. So yeah, you might as well enjoy the shorter stuff while you can. Yeah. Yeah. Plus I think like our coaches have a little bit of a unique approach that it's not like, Oh, once you go marathon, you're like never running on the track again. Yeah. Like Amy herself had a lot of success, like coming back off marathon and like 
I think winning the trials yeah. 10K after. So, oh, I wanted cool. to add one thing about Amy. Um, a lot of like me coming onto this team too, like is full circle with Amy because back in 2012, like her and I went one, two and like now she's my coach. And that was like a huge deciding factor as well. It's just like someone who has the most experience, like in the running industry, like she's one of the most experienced runners out there. So to have that be like full circle too, is like really cool. What kind of adjustments from a coaching perspective do you feel like you've had uh, switching over to Puma Elite? Yeah. Like where's all this speed coming from all of a sudden? Like what's yeah, the, yeah. what's the secret sauce that <laughs> that's going on over there? Um, it's old lady speed. <laughs> <laughs> um, or do you think it's all like, do you think it's all mental? Like you're, you're training, you're training, you have more training partners now and you're like, you've, to me, it seems like you kind of had like a, a vote of self-confidence in switching, uh, training groups. So maybe it is all mental. I think that, well, the coaching has been really different. Um, very, very different kind of training, um, that I've ever done in my whole life. Uh, so I think actually the speed has always been there. It's the strength that can back up the speed at the Mm. end of a race. So like, I'm pretty confident in my ability with 400, 600 to go to cover any gaps or to outkick somebody, hopefully. Um, but like, there was no point in my career where I was there 600 meters to go. Mm-hmm. Um, so like to have the strength back up the speed is what I think is making the difference at this point. Got it. So what is the shot that, uh, you run either of you run the Mar- Olympic marathon trials, like depending on how this year goes, like, could you see yourself doing that? Oh, we're doing it. Yeah. You're doing it for sure. Okay. You're doing it for sure. Okay. I wasn't, I wasn't yeah. totally yeah. sure if you didn't want to like compromise the, the tracks, the, like the track season to come after that, but you're, you're, you're going to give it every shot you can then like both the uh, yeah, marathon team and then the track team as well. Give it, go, go for both. I think so. Yeah. I mean, marathon trials are in February and then track trials won't be until June or July. So yeah, true. I feel like like, why not? Plenty of time. Yeah, that's true. Um, that's true. And you can qualify for the trials with a half. So right. there's options for sure there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm guessing like no, no marathon though, before the marathon trials, like may, probably a half, another half or two before then, but no marathon. We don't know. Yeah. It's <laughs> not totally true yet. I know you're just focused on track right now. So like maybe, yeah. maybe these are dumb questions. Cause yeah, you'll, you'll figure out the fall in the fall uh, or, yeah. you know, the summer, but uh, depending mm-hmm. on how the summer goes, but yeah, I, I didn't know if that was but, like potential that we could see you at like, I don't know, Chicago marathon or something like that uh, this fall. Those are great questions, yeah, yeah. actually. Um, questions that should be asked. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, probably not Chicago. Um, yeah. I don't, I don't want to speak know. too soon, yeah. but yeah. like to answer your question, we don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah, we definitely we definitely don't want to rush the first one. So like if it would be too crazy to pack it in, then we won't. Um and we'll just do house. Fair also enough. she's this one with the marathon. <laughs> we'll see. I've never run that part of my life. <laughs> On long run, like it's incredible. Like I have never ran a long run like that before. <laughs> I literally was like hyperventilating after our last long run, but. <laughs> and and yeah. Fiona's like casually having conversations or like, what is she just like locked in? And with like a mile and a half to go, I was like, cause we threw on a little tempo at the end and I was like, how much longer? <laughs> and she's like a mile and a half. And I was like, what? <laughs> well, it's partly just because you don't wear a watch. So I was like, you drunk for both of us. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm always asking, like, how much longer or how many more reps? <laughs> I'm not the most. <laughs> I'm kind of an annoying teammate sometimes. But <laughs> I mean, Fiona, you do seem to be the master of... Uh 
killing a debut. I seem to remember your half marathon debut went pretty well. So maybe that's the the play for the marathon is just, yeah, show, show up and debut it at the trials. And maybe that's the, the secret recipe for you. Maybe. I do think there's <laughs> something to like just going in with that, like beginning. Without mindset. knowing. Yeah. 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 And, and like not knowing what to expect that can actually be really good. So we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Um, I, I actually like. think we... I think we talked about last time with you, Natasha, about you not wearing a watch. Uh, can you remind, like, was that, is that a thing that you've been doing for a long time? Uh, and especially like when you're training alone, like how did, I don't know, how, how did you, I think last time you just said, you just kind of guesstimate, you're like, oh, like this feels like it's long enough for an easy run. Like, it, you know, you're, you like had a, you had a sense of this was the right amount, right? Yeah, yeah. Like I'm pretty sure now it's all coming back to me. The last conversation when we were talking about this, you're like, I don't know. Like, I, I know what, it, I know what an easy run feels like. 80 yeah. episodes ago. Yeah. I, love, I, I love that you remember that. Um, most people are like, what? You don't own a watch? I don't even own one. I've never worn a watch in my yeah. entire running journey. Um, I I don't know if it has to do with like struggling with OCD from a young age, but um, I just don't like it. And like, it takes the joy out of running for me, like more dramatic than it even needs to be. <laughs> but like, I just get mad at the watch. And like, um, even like my, one of my new housemates here, um, like I'll go out for an easy run and I guess I'll come back like way over an hour later or something. And she'll be like, have you been gone this whole time? And I'm like, I don't know. And I don't care. Like, <laughs> You're like what time? I just, I like, I like to just experience running for the most part. Like when it's workout day, it's like, okay, yeah, we got to time this stuff. And then I'll let her do it or coach <laughs> um, or the treadmill. <laughs> but <laughs> like on an easy day, the last thing I want to do is like obsess about anything. I just want to like experience running and like what I love about it, which is has nothing to do with like monitoring. What splits you're yeah. hitting. Yeah. 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 I, I'd be curious, uh, Fiona, to hear your take on the on the watch list grind. Yeah, I mean, I guess I'm not like as committed to it because I do wear a watch, but <laughs> I've been I've been using so, like she uses yeah, this kind. Yeah. Oh, well, that's I so, think, so you're yeah. somewhere in between. Yeah, I'm somewhere in between because like it's nice like on an easy run. I'm like I really there's no reason I need to know how fast I'm going like as long as I'm not pushing too hard. Um, so. Yeah, I've been enjoying the uh, no GPS life for sure. So I I do get it. I don't think like my internal clock is strong enough to where I could like even reasonably estimate how far I'm running. So I will keep the watch. But yeah, I like just running for time on these days for sure. My internal yeah. clock, I will say, is pretty good yeah. though. Yeah. Most of the time, like I can pretty much hit it on the head, like within a couple minutes, like. Oh, like I'll go out for an hour and then I'll come back at like 58 minutes or something. Typically. Yeah. That's impressive. That's, yeah. And it's is it an out and back or is it a is it a route? It's like a wherever my legs take me. Very <laughs> a little too free flowing, but <laughs> 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 See, I could do this for like a 30 minute double, but definitely not like a 10 mile morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like four or five uh, miles is much easier to gauge yeah. than yeah. an hour long run. Yeah. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. That, I was wondering if maybe part of the success was like, yeah, you just didn't even know you're like secretly running 20 more miles a week than you even think you are. Just cause like every day you're like a mile or two over what you thought. So you're just, uh, I don't know, grinding out bigger volume than you think, but yeah, I'm sure at this point you'd kind of have a, have a pretty good sense of what you're doing. Yeah. Like getting too caught up in the details is not important in my mind. Um, I think the hard days is where it really counts. And like on the easy days, it's more about, okay, let's really become in tune with my body and what my body needs today. Um, and it's not always textbook or like what's written on paper. So, so a lot of pro runners have been getting onto the Strava game lately. So I, I it's, you, you two are probably like way out, like forever off the Strava game <laughs> based on this conversation. Untraceable. Untraceable. Yes. 
I don't mean to like hate on anything, but the Strava thing is like <laughs> when I go on runs with people and they're like, hold on. Oh, running, running, running. And then, oh, stop. Like, mm-hmm. like, did you do? Oh, shoot. I clicked something. Hold on. Oh, you're good. <laughs> oh, now you're oh, sideways. No. <laughs> there we go. You're back. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. Um, but like the bringing social media into like your running stats, like that, it's already hard enough. Like Instagram, like all of this stuff. And then like to bring it into like my running i don't get it but like people if, if people like it. stopping their watch uh early or like oh i have to like round like i have to get the full mile otherwise like it's like i don't know there's just like a lot of extra shit that people do for having their runs on strava <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I, I kind yeah. of feel both ways about it a little bit. I, okay, the way that I think that it, Strava maybe has been positive is like some it motivates some people more that need the extra motivation. I, like I'm not like not pro runner level, but people who are maybe they're like, oh, because people are watching me, like it's going to hold me accountable. So like I'm going to actually go out for my run today, sort of thing. Um, but I think <laughs> probably more more often than not, it's the more harmful side, at least for people that are serious about running. Cause yeah, you're like, Oh, I want to run faster average pace. Cause I don't want anyone to think I'm slow. I'm just like all, all in my head about, yeah. How, wh- what's my Strava title going to be? I got to capture some pictures on this run. Like it's basically like never ending. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm similarly, I think we're about the same age, Natasha. Like I'm, I, I'm getting similarly kind of over social media in general. And every time something new comes out where like Strava, Strava and I was like, oh, well, you can upload videos on there. I was like, do I need another place I can upload and watch videos all day? <laughs> like, I've got so many of those platforms already that I don't even want to be on anymore. So just getting, yeah, I'm, I'm getting kind of over it too. Yeah, and like another thing too is when pro athletes share all of their training, it's like, but you got to compete against these people. Like, what? why would you want to share every little thing that you're doing? But I mean... Sorry, (laughs) I just personally would not want to share every aspect of my training um, to be like judged or like competed against. Yeah. Is it at all? Are you aware of is it any of the brands that are also encouraging athletes to get on Strava? Mm Because like it really seems in the last year, it's been like a huge influx of pro runners now like. Hey, check out my Strava. And I I don't know if it's a whole, like just getting more following and, you know, more eyes on you. And that's like, I don't know if that's like a personal push or like a brand push in any way. I don't know if you have any like behind the scenes on that. We're not big enough to deal. (laughs) 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 Um, Yeah, I haven't gotten any of that. Like Puma Puma hasn't said to you like, hey, get up on Strava Strava. and get some more followers and videos and stuff. They haven't said that. No, no, no. Okay. Yeah. Okay. They're, yeah, they're pretty chill about them. Is pretty casual. Media and all that. Stuff. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And our coach, especially, who's like, yeah, we don't need to be yeah. worrying about things that we don't need to be worrying about. We yeah. need to worry about like being the best runners in the country. Hopefully, yeah. so yeah. Instead yeah. of I mean, instead of giving away secrets, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, there's no secrets, but also like, I don't know. I feel like it could just get to be like an additional source of stress if you're like constantly thinking about like, oh, what's this going to look like? Or a distraction per se. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And, yeah. I don't know. It's nice to just like be able to focus on what we're doing and not be like, oh, but what are they doing too? That's you know? the thing. It's like, like yeah. I would be like, what did she just do? And it would get in my head. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, you know, oh shit, they just did this and I have an easy day, but like I need to be yeah. at that level. Yeah. 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 And you just like don't know the context. Like if mm-hmm. you see like one workout, like could be somebody on their bike. Who yeah. knows? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that's actually the exact thing that I kind of stopped 
so my watch auto syncs to Strava, but like, I don't, I don't scroll through it anymore. I used to be very diligent. Like what's everyone doing? And that was the exact problem is I care less about if uh, I run too slow and people see my splits and Mm -hmm. if they think I'm slow, like I'm over that, I don't care. But when I look at other people's, I'm like, Oh, like, I don't know, this guy's running what I want to be running in the marathon. And he did this workout and I literally cannot physically do this workout. So like, I should just give up now. Cause like, I'm not fast enough. And and like, that's, and that, like that definitely got in my head. So at this point, I mean, I'm sorry, everybody, but yeah, I don't, I don't give out any kudos to anybody. My watch (laughs) just uploads my, my run and I I don't look at anyone's crap anymore. So, you know, whatever. (laughs) Good. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But I guess the real next step would be to get rid of the GPS watch that auto syncs and just go back to the, you know, go back to the Timex, the old school, Mm -hmm. uh, $15 watch. So yeah, Yeah. that's, that's tougher. It probably (laughs) lasts longer too. It would. I'd have to. I'd stop having to pay like five hundred bucks every two years for a, a new GPS watch every time they crap out. They don't seem to last. Yeah. Timex watch will last for twenty years. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, no more charging your watch either. It's nice. Yeah, <laughs> yeah good <laughs> point. Right, stop. Though. That's it. <laughs> I'm. Uh, I'm. I'm curious, uh, Fiona, when. Uh, when Natasha first came over, like what what, are, what were your initial thoughts, at least like le- even leading up to it? At what point did you know it was kind of yeah, like yeah. <laughs> in the works of yeah. Natasha coming over and joining the team? You have, uh, you know, like Wednesday Adam Jr. And are you like the Enid <laughs> to, to her Wednesday Adams? Wait, I think uh, you're more Wednesday than me. <laughs> what? <laughs> not, not, you're not a appearance one, but maybe for some <laughs> I'm not that <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I was super excited, especially because um, we actually had an experience um, at NACAX over the summer, which is like the North American Championships, mm-hmm. um, where we were like just USA teammates um, in the 5K. And we like made a plan before, even though we were like sponsored by different groups at this point and everything where we were going to like take turns with the lead because we wanted to make it like an honest race so we could like try to get points at this meet um and like we both followed through um with our part and I thought that was really cool because like we're competitors like we didn't have to help each other um but just like knowing that I could trust her from that experience and just like you know the way she raises is like very fierce. Um, I've always been like, I've always looked up to the way she's done things. Um, so yeah, I was super stoked to hear that she was joining us. That's excellent. Are are you two roommates or do you live separately? Yeah, we live here in my new home. Um, Fiona picked this great house. Um, there's a running path right out our door. And we live with two other girls on the team. They're a bit younger. Um, so it's that's a really good environment. And yeah, like um, her and I, like, we just seem to like get each other. We work well together. Like we're always willing to help each other. And like, it hasn't always been like that with teammates before. So like that, like where we're just like, on the same level, doing the same stuff and willing to help each other. Um, very healthy competition. So it's, it's different and it's good. Yeah. I'm sure that's a big, big slash nice change to go from, yeah, do it, doing everything on your own to now you actually like live with people. You can build the camaraderie and team spirit, like on and off the, well, on and off the track, on and off the road, on and off where, wherever, you know, wherever you're training. Uh, so that's probably a, a nice adjustment, even lifestyle wise, I would assume. Yeah, it is. I was kind of losing my mind. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I really didn't realize for like, it's kind of sad to say this, but for like seven years, I didn't realize that it's harder to do it alone. <laughs> And like, I was so isolated, like doing this world-class training all by myself. Um, and like, you really, you start to like lose it a little bit (laughs) and like, I just didn't even realize that it was a problem until like Alistair and like people came up to me and they're like, it's going to be easier this way. Like, like this is 
there's a glass ceiling over your head and you can get so much higher this way. So it's really special. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, so what I, if, I dog sat for my parents for a week solo in the suburbs and I was going crazy running. So I, you know, seven years, <laughs> that's a lot longer than one week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. What, as roommates, what, uh, what have you picked up on about each other? The, the first impressions as roommates, so to speak. Yeah, <laughs> whose who's sink is messier? Oh, mm-hmm. I am spotless. Like, look, this is my room tour. Very impressive. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing out of place. I have OCD. But yeah, yeah, let's hear. She probably has more stuff on me than I do about her. <laughs> you know, yeah, the the speed with which the room was fully set up was very impressive. Um, yeah, very complete room <laughs> set up. I don't know. <laughs> do I follow it? strict routine of no <laughs> no i would say <laughs> it go you know it checks out with like the free-flowing approach to the running i'd say there's a free-flowing approach in general is that fair yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. like one of our roommates was like where where are you going where have you been all this time <laughs> I was like, i'm out doing stuff like <laughs> I, I don't have a bedtime i don't have like any routine that i follow but as for Fiona, let's see. <laughs> she loves to sleep. Um, oh, I feel that. That's, I was going to say, that's, your, that's part of your job. Maybe even the most important part of your job now, you could say. So that's good. That's a good thing to do. Yeah. Um, Are you a, is Fiona like a tactical afternoon nap type of, type of person? Um, or is it just never. sleeping in? It's like she she gets really grumpy, like if we have to get up earlier <laughs> or not grumpy, but just like this look like if coach says practice is an earlier time, you just see it right in her face. Like, wow. and, it, and it takes all the way to like two miles to go and a 20 mile long run for her to be like, oh, I'm feeling pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm usually fine once the run's going, but yeah, <laughs> waking up around the house, I'm like, I really need coffee. <laughs> yeah. But just like in general, being around her and the other girls is like a really good influence on me. Like, oh, maybe I should get eight hours of sleep. Like that might help. <laughs> um, so like they set a pretty good example of like how to actually be a professional runner. Um, which I never really mastered. <laughs> t- t- there, yeah, t- your uh, teammates are teaching the veteran of the sport um, the, the ways <laughs> the ways to be a professional runner versus the <laughs> the reverse of that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's good though, too to see that there is like some more room for flexibility and just you know having a life too. Like <laughs> when you. <laughs> Like, especially when I first got out of college, it was like, oh my gosh, how do I devote like these? Because I was used to having such a packed schedule that yeah. like, it was like, oh my gosh, I have 15 minutes of free time. Like, how do I become a better runner in my 15 minutes of free time? And like, now I feel like I'm more able to be like, oh, okay, it's okay to relax and think about other things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like Clear- and clearly that works and is needed. I mean, you've improved immensely since college so like there, there's something for that less stressful less uh you know time or you know schedule packed life for sure it's, <laughs> it it works <laughs> there's a reason that's the lifestyle of a uh, pro runner <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah you gotta have balance like this it's all too consuming and then like in one day you can be injured or like just the whole world seems to like collapse on you sometimes as a pro athlete. And so if you don't have balance to your life, then every time that happens, you're going to have an identity crisis and you're going to be like, what do I do? What is the meaning of life? (laughs) Exactly. I'm all about the balance. Exactly. Yeah. I'm actually speaking of uh, you being nice and tidy. I'm, I'm jealous of the shoe rack that you have behind you. I, f- I just have like a big bin that I just throw all of my shoes in and I can't, and I can't find them. <laughs> like, like I, I find one <laughs> shoe and the other shoes like buried in the bin somewhere. And yeah, you're, I, I like, I like, I like how organized you are. I wish some of that would rub off on me. So <laughs> it really makes a difference, especially like 
if you wake up late for practice? <laughs> like, how do I make this easier on myself so that I don't be late to practice? <laughs> I think it's, Absolutely. I think it's so interesting that you're like, you have this very, uh, free flowing approach to training and life in general, but then you have like, uh, like some things you're very organized about. And I think that that's kind of like, they, did called, you ever do the Natasha's ever butt heads about like, no, like you need to do it organized <laughs> or you need to be like more relaxed. My alter egos. Yes. They <laughs> exist, and they fight. Um, I call it organized chaos. Like, even like the decorations on my walls, like very chaotic, but it's like strategic and organized. So to me, everything makes sense. But from an outsider's view, people are like, what are you doing, man? Like, come on. <laughs> it's like, I know what I'm doing. It just doesn't look like it. <laughs> oh, man. Maybe we should ask a, a couple of closing questions. Uh, yeah, I've, I've got one for uh, Natasha. Yeah. If you could... If you could give yourself or yeah, if you could give yourself a piece of advice after kind of having this uh start to a really successful transition, what would you tell yourself, say like five years ago, six years ago? Oh, that's heavy. Um <laughs> even if even if you're not telling yourself like, you know, switch teams or like what would what would that advice be? I that, actually, that's a great question because um, being around a lot of younger athletes recently, I've been getting these questions and it's really like forced me to think about that stuff. But I would say like always listen to your gut because um, I mean, this is a career where you start young, you start very impressionable and you don't feel like you have a voice. You don't always feel like you have a say over your own body and what you're doing, where you're moving. Um, and you do like from early on, like right when you graduate college, have authority over what you're doing and listen to your gut. And um, people are, will respect you if you approach it that way. If you approach it timid and like super impressionable and just like, oh pull me this way yank me that way then that's exactly how your career is going to go but if you stick to your guns and listen to your gut um I mean your gut is never wrong and it always directs you it's just it gets muddled and hard to listen to sometimes so that's what I would say I love that well said thank you um, <laughs> my my uh it's funny because yeah we always we always like we like to close out the podcast with like words of wisdom. And I feel like you just, you just delivered that. So uh, <laughs> that should, that should have gone right at the end. <laughs> um, but, uh, I guess my, my closing question that I'm curious about is on top of your, you know, sponsorship with Puma, who is a dream sponsor that you both have and like non, non running related, even if you could have any company sponsor you, who would it be? Oh. Um, I don't know. I really like the way Patagonia like goes about things. Um, <laughs> um, I really, yeah, respect the way they're like actually committed to sustainability. Um, mm -hmm. So I think it would be cool to work with them potentially. Yeah. yeah. Maybe Red Bull would be cool. <laughs> Ooh, that would be a dope sponsor. Yeah. Do you, wait, do you drink a lot of Red Bull or no? Nope. Just. <laughs> <laughs> I do when I go out like for dancing and like <laughs> yeah 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 little cocktail yeah. mix <laughs> okay okay um, <laughs> but I I like the brand like I like the the vibes marketing. that they bring just the, it's like it's more of just the drink it's like the whole like mo that yeah. they bring you yeah. know definitely be adventurous get out there and do crazy shit yeah yeah definitely a lot of my youtube reels are just uh people doing red bull stunts like flying mm -hmm. that uh plane on top of a building or some random i don't know something <laughs> random that yeah. was some crazy stuff <laughs> um I've, cool. I've one more for uh fiona what is one thing that you learned from natasha and one thing that you've taught her Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, um, I guess just betting on yourself. I feel like mm -hmm. she's really good at doing that. Like 
whether it's in a race or like betting on herself to move out here and join us. Um, and I think she's, again, don't want to like put words in her mouth, but I feel like she's done that like again and again, like that's what it takes to stay in the sport this long and have the success that she's had. Um, so yeah. And then one thing I've taught her, um, <laughs> I don't know <laughs> how to how to hurt really bad at the end of a workout. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, okay, I'll yeah, I'll tell you. Um, her composure is everything. Like she always is holding composure despite like the situation and workouts and like like social scenarios. Um, so I would say that that's what he's talking about. <laughs> Maybe I'm just like a robot. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. So you said the Boston 5k and then, uh, yeah, where can we see you after that? And do you know yet at this point? Um, so Boston 5k, are we allowed to do <laughs> If, if you going? can't say, yeah, that's, that's totally fine. Just, yeah. you know, where, where can the people witness, uh, all the progress you're making in the fast times? Where, where can they witness it next? Um, track 10 K still details are a little up in the air. Okay. We still haven't gotten yeah. the 30, 40 standard. Right. Um, so yeah, that's, that will be our next focus. Top, top goal. Yeah. Yep. Well, excellent. We're excited to follow along and watch and yeah. And then, you know, next year you both make the marathon uh, Olympic team too. see you, see you out at the trials. That'll be exciting. No, <laughs> get, get a, getting a little ahead of ourselves maybe, but hey, it's not, that is not, that is not out of the realm of possibility. So I, I'm, yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited to see it. We better be able to bet on that. Yes. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, that's yeah. She said it, bet on yourself. So got to manifest it, put it into the universe. We're making the team. I'm saying it right now. Let's go. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If we could bet on it, you know, I would, I would place a bet today. I'd put a, put a few bucks there on it and see if, see if I can get a, a good Actually, I'll put way more than a few bucks. I'll put, I'll put all the money in our uh, checking the account for it. the company. Yeah. Yeah. I'll bet the, bet the whole checking account on it. Why not? <laughs> well, like the date. Di- the marathon is so competitive. Like I can't even yeah. tell what's more competitive at this point, the marathon or the track. Cause like everyone. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. 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 No, no easy teams to make in the U S that's for damn sure. So no. yeah. Especially yeah. for women. Yeah. So that's good. I mean, that's why you get, yeah, you got to take multiple shots at it. Yeah. Go for 10 K mm-hmm. and marathon and see what, see what lands. So Awesome. Well, thank you both for coming on. Any, anything else you want to plug? Anything? Uh, I don't know. Anywhere? Any? Yeah. Anything you want to direct people to? I think they probably know where to find you on on socials. Hopefully. Um. No, nah, I think. Yeah, we've been pretty low key on social media, so the occasional post every once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> Let people know that you're thriving. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Go, go find them on Strava, everybody. Go, go search it. <laughs> <laughs> see, see if you can find their profiles. <laughs> By the way, I still want to do a beer mile at some point. So yeah, you, we, we need to have you do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's, it sucks timing wise that the world champs this year is July yeah. 1st. Cause literally does not work in your season uh, at all. Um, close to USA's. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not, not the smartest. Um, you, t- t- you could maybe do it if you wanted to do it with a uh, non-alcoholic beer, just to, you know, see what you're capable of. Cause honestly it's, it's just as difficult with non-alcoholic beer. It really doesn't make a difference. So yeah. that would be one yeah. option. It's all but, about the chugging, right? It's all about the the carbonation and the volume. So yeah, the, the alcohol doesn't really affect you while you're doing it. So it comes down to that. So yeah, I mean, whenever you want to do it, we will happily name a time and a place. Yeah. Yeah, We'll we'll, be there. We'll be there. Okay. Yes. All right. Yes. (laughs) Whenever it fits into your season, just let us know. And yeah, we'd, we'd love to witness slash partake. We'll have to like get other very elite girls to do it too. 
I, that I, mean, would be... I think after I think after July, like there is some interest uh, from the pros. So. We've, we've actually gotten some DMs of some people that are probably yeah. going to come do the world championship because we got decent prize money that are you know pro runners. So oh, there are some people willing to <laughs> willing to do it in the middle of the season. So we'll we'll see. Uh, we can't overpromise anything yet because it's not uh, you know we're still three months out. It's not uh, mm-hmm. solidified, but. I don't know. Yeah, we might see a few of them actually do it at the World Champs. But then I agree. Then once, you know, the season's over, when it actually makes sense for a bigger group, it'd be fun to actually organize something for for additional people. Maybe we'll have like a little, uh, I don't know, U.S. Championship second edition and have some prize money on it or something. Be fun. (laughs) Awesome. I'll be there. Perfect. Well, cool. Thank you both for for. Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, I'll at least come watch. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. (laughs) Awesome. Thank you both for coming on. Thank Thank you you. so much for having us. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. 